Hi, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. First time passing through, you know the drill. Subscribe, like, share, comment and interact with my subscribers. And yes, if you're a returning subscriber, welcome. Thank you for your support. I wanted to kind of elaborate about the points-based system since it was publicly announced last week. And we want to know what that means for us. Well, for the most of us, it means that if you're low skilled, you might get deported. And they're expecting people with high skills to do their work. And all of these people who are unemployed or who may have um, have some reason for being unemployed, they're expecting them to go in there and do the work. Well, the majority of those who are unemployed are the elderly, the disabled, um, and people who are looking after children. So I'm not quite sure how that will work. But anyway, Pretty Patel said what did she say exactly she made some kind of sardonic remark now did I write it down that is the question I should have really organized myself better than this pretty Patel she says we'll all enjoy supermarkets much more once crowds of low-skilled migrant staff have been deported. So, does she expect high-skilled migrants or UK citizens to pack the shelves? Considering her, her parents, Ugandan Asians, were low-skilled when they started off and they built some kind of supermarket empire, I heard. But if they hadn't been given the opportunity that some of the low-skilled migrants have been afforded in the past, they wouldn't have got where they had got and she probably wouldn't have got where she's got. But people have a short memory. People forget where they come from. And if you look on Pretty Patel, as far as anybody else is concerned, if she wasn't in that position, she'd be considered an immigrant. So is she considered an immigrant even in that position? The same white like Sahih Javid and who else there is? Sadiq Khan. They have these high positions and they talk about immigrants as though they're not one. It doesn't matter. You've got the colour on your face. You can't scrub it off. Therefore, as far as people who consider people of colour immigrants, you are an immigrant as well. Even though you're advocating against immigrants, just because you're saying get them all out. If you've got a black face or a dusky face, they're not going to treat you any different. They'll be thinking to themselves and you want to get out and all. That's what they'll be thinking. Do you think you're going to be exempt? just because you're telling them that you want to get the immigrants out. No, you won't. You won't be exempt. The pretty Patels of this world will not be exempt from scrutiny and racism when the whatever hits the fan. So, the new immigration updates. The new immigration updates. The points-based system for 2021 includes a visa application process, um, skilled workers, a global talent scheme, low skilled workers, international students and graduates, other visa routes and visiting the UK, EU nationals living in the UK by 31st of December 2020 and crossing the UK border and proving immigration status in the UK. Uh, the source of this is um, I think visa and immigration, I'll put the link below. Um, EU and EEC and Swiss nationals living legally in the UK under the settlement scheme will be able to use their ID cards until I believe 2025. So on the 19th of February 2020, which was last week, oh, this is in my face, um, the UK government published the points based immigration system, which takes effect on the 1st of January. 2021, a day after we leave the EU. They don't even give you like a grace period. Day after, you know, we leave the EU on the 31st of December. This goes into effect on the 1st of January. Um, EU citizens and non-EU nationals will be treated in the same way thenceforth. It focuses on enticing migrants who are highly skilled. and Citizens of Ireland are not effective. 
affected. So the visa application process, new immigration pass to work, live and study in the UK from 1st of January 2021. We'll probably know how that works nearer the time. Um, EU nationals will pay for a visa online. Biometrics will be required, a digital photo, but they won't need any fingerprints. Non-EU nationals applying for visas, they'll need fingerprints taken, photos, and that will be done through an overseas centre. Skilled workers, they will have an approved job offer from an approved sponsor. Well, they'll have a job offer from an approved sponsor. Um, effective 1st of January 2021, skill level of RQF3 or above, um, or an A level be, will be the requirement to get into the country. They'll have to communicate, that's hear, write and speak at a very high level of English. And they'll have to be having a job off of 25,600. Um, if they haven't got any of the, if they haven't got all of the bug, they've got the system where you can trade off points. So if you're young, you can trade off points because that's they give you quite a few points if you're young, and if you're um, if you have a PhD, for example, but you don't have um, an approved job offer, they might be willing to negotiate that. So you can trade points. Um, employers not currently at a, on, on the approved rotor who are not approved sponsors, they'll need to get their finger out and get that sorted if they want to be an approved um, sponsor. But I don't know if they want that responsibility. It's a hell of a responsibility. Then they have a global talent scheme. EU skilled um, scientists can come um, to the UK without a job offer. But have you heard that they've... Um, that anybody, you know, like the entertainers and musicians and the sports people, once once this goes into effect, you know, they won't be able to come and go and um, perform in the UK. And the musician's um, body are really kicking up a stink because it will really spoil business. It will all, it, not only will it affect the artists themselves, but we will not um, be privy to their talent once all this kicks in, because they all need visas, it's more money, it's more paperwork. Um, I do understand why they're doing it, because you could get people who get to Europe with less scrutiny, and then if they can come to the UK to do it, like they'll be doing a, shoot, a show in Europe, um, whatever kind of show it is, and then they can skip, hop and jump to the UK and do a show. So what they're trying to, they're trying to stop that. So their visit stops in the U EU, and then we we don't get privy to their to their shows unless they go through all this bureaucracy. It's got its advantages. It's got its disadvantages. It means that we won't be able to see. There won't be many concerts happening in the UK. It means that if you want to see a concert, you'll have to go to the EU. It means you'll have to pay for a visa to go to the EU and. <sighs> This is not going to be fun, folks. It's not going to be fun. So, um, low-skilled worker, there's no immigration route for them. Um, international students and graduates, um, students pathway for EU, EEC and Swiss nationals, they can apply for a visa if they've been given a place on a course. The applicants will need to be able to speak, write and understand English at a good level, sufficient to support themselves, have enough money to support themselves, and they need to be able to pay for their course. Um, there's also this route accessible to international students who have completed their degree to get a job of any skill level for 24 months in the UK, once they've completed their degree. Um, they've got other visa routes, which is the short-term work visa, Tier 1, Tier 5, and then you can also get the Tier 1 um, for EU nationals, visiting the UK work and study visa, they can get that. EU, EEC, Swiss nationals and non-EU will not be obligated to obtain a visa to come to the UK when visiting up to six months. I don't quite understand that. I don't, well, I'm not going to comment on that. Anything I don't understand, I'm not going to comment on. Um, other EU nationals living in the UK 
by 31st of December 2020, EEC, EU and Swiss nationals can apply to the EU settlement scheme, but they'll have to do that before the 31st of December 2020. Otherwise, you might be out on your ear. Um, those who can cross the border using e-passports, um, we've got Australia, Canada, USA, Japan, New Zealand, Singapore and Korea. I'm surprised China ain't in there. I wonder if China would have been there if they hadn't got the coronavirus or whether they wouldn't have been there anyway. Anyway, um, as long as you've got a biometric chip in your passport, you will be able to carry on using the e-passports to cross the border. And also EU nationals and EEC and Swiss nationals. Um, but it is under review for the latter. EU and EEC Swiss nationals will still be able to visit UK using a valid passport. The, I, uh, the ID card for EU, EEC and Swiss nationals will not be valid after 2020, but the date has not been confirmed. Proving your immigration status. Well, EU, EEC and Swiss nationals can use the, an online verification status. And when I tried to use that, I found it really... Um, tiresome. Like I said, it's fine if you've been living at an address for more than three years. If, um, what was the other obstacle I found? It was mostly the address I found to be a problem because if you haven't been resident at an address for more than three years, it will, it will, the verification system won't work. So it's not it's not foolproof and the one that we used it wasn't really great the one that I used to test it out so nah what else um, employers landlords public service providers will carry on accepting EU nationals, EEC and Swiss nationals identity card until the 31st of December and right through till June 2021. Non-EU nationals will use physical e evidence to prove their status, i.e. a passport. And this last bit of paper, what does it say? Will high skilled migrants or UK legal residents want to staff care homes and clean? Dudu and P to serve the vulnerable. I mean, it's fine kicking out all the low skilled staff, but who's going to do the work? I think there's this misnomer. I think there's this perception by people like Pretty Patel that we've got a lot of people out there, i.e. white people, who are scrambling for these jobs scrambling to look after the elderly in care homes, scrambling to um, fill up Amazon shelves and, you know, supermarket shelves and serve behind um, bars and in restaurants. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but for some reason, I think she thinks that anybody without a job is going to be scrambling, picking strawberries and stuff like that. They won't be able to wait when all these immigrants get out of the country. They can't wait to go and clean up shit and, you know, and puddles and puddles of wee and vomit. They can't wait. They can't wait to clean all the toilets. They can't wait to take on all these cleaning jobs. They just can't wait. They're just out there sitting in their homes and just waiting for this opportunity. To stand up for um, 18 hours sometimes, packing shelves. That's, the, that's what they think. They think, oh, all the immigrants are taking their jobs. They don't seem to get it in their thick skull that the immigrants are only taking on jobs that certain people feel they're too big to do. They're too high to do that. Too, they're too good to do that. They're better than that. And if I can't do what I'm trained to do, I, I'm not going to do nothing at all. We have lots of people like that. There's a lot. I think when you're looking after people, 
especially vulnerable people. Your heart has to be in it. And for a lot of migrant workers who come over here, their heart is in it. There's always an exception to the rule, but for the most part, they're doing a good job. There is nothing worse than putting people in a job that they don't want to do because they won't do it well. They'll sabotage it. We've already seen people who have been forced to work in certain circumstances. They put all kinds of stuff in the food. They treat people abominably. They start resenting people that they have to look after. So it's not like you can just take up these people and say, OK, we've now got all these vacancies. You can come in and fill it. They don't want it. They don't want to clean shit. They don't want to clean toilets. They don't want to pick strawberries. They don't want to do it. They would much prefer sitting at home, watching TV with their legs up, um, getting a few shekels at the end of the month from universal credit then do that and the people who have qualified and spent years studying do you think they've done all of that to go and clean toilets so do you think all these students who have been studying for so long are going to come out of that and say okay can't get a job as a doctor or as a scientist or um, an IT um, consultant. Looks like I'm going to have to go and clean toilets. It looks like I'm going to have to go and work in a bar. It looks like I'm going to have to um, pull dust carts or, you know. Is that what Pretty Patel is, thinks is going to happen now that all the low-skilled migrants have been deported and you've got more rows in the aisles. How myopic is that? They haven't got a clue. Seriously, they do not have a clue what it's like. You know, at work, we have administrators and I'm an administrator and you have the people at the top and the people at the top make all of these decisions. None of the decisions work. How well, hardly any of the decisions work unless they engage an administrator to take some take them through it. Now, sometimes you'll get situations where they feel that because something is working in one area, it's going to work in the same area that they are. And they forget about the demographics. They forget about language barriers. They, they forget about the level of ethnicity in certain areas and the fact that it's going to work in one area it's not going to work in another area but it takes an admin staff to say excuse me what's going to happen if they can't complete a survey because they don't speak English and it's like the I never thought of that but it's the same principle you've got these people at the top making decisions and they haven't engaged with people on the ground they haven't got a clue what's happening down here yeah so um i think that's it really Does the Brits have a strong command of the language of the country that they've immigrated to around the world? That's another thing. They're, um, they're asking for a high command of England, English, when you know, for people to come here. When they go to other countries, they're expecting people to adapt to their language. You know, hardly any of them are, you know seeking to improve their language what you'll find a lot of brits do when they go abroad they'll find a british colony or a bridge a place where all the brits are like when people um, leave here and go to spain they'll go to the, the part of spain where all the brits are so they kind of have another britain inside another country so they don't have to learn the culture they don't have to learn the language they've got their own people there that that they engage with and then they probably have a little local that does their little running around and that person will get to know English so that they don't have to learn it. But that doesn't work here. 
England is the superior, English is the superior language, so everybody has to learn it. And it has to be of a certain language before, a certain level before they come here. Anyway, I thought I'd just give you a quick run through of that. And um, yeah, that's all for now. Bye bye.